And so Peter says, well, let's just do what they did. Let's build a shelter, a tabernacle here for you and Moses and Elijah. And we'll just worship all of you equally. You don't need to go to the cross. It's good for us to be here. Jesus didn't come to build tabernacles on the earth. He came to save mankind. So once again, God is showing you, don't listen to the devil. Listen to what God is saying. Didn't come here to set up shrines and shelters. Amen. To worship Moses and Elijah equally with Jesus. He didn't cover that. He came to die on the cross. But once again, the enemy, he doesn't say here particularly, but the enemy is, you know, it's, you get it. You get the picture. Satan, uh, really, the, Peter's in his flesh again. It's good for us to be here. And I understand, man. He just saw a mighty manifestation. An amazing manifestation of the glory of God in a man. So I understand what he's talking about, but that's not what Jesus came. Because Moses and Elijah are talking to him about dying on the cross. Go on, Jesus. Go to the cross. Don't stay here. Don't get, don't, don't get enshrined here. Hallelujah. Don't become just one among many. You are the only one, the only true God, the Son of God, and the only one that should receive worship. You are greater than the law and the prophets. You are greater than Moses and Elijah. You are not to be worshipped on an equal basis with them. You are greater than they are and all of them are subject to you Jesus don't listen to the voice of the enemy while he yet spoke behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud this is the voice of God of course which said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him don't listen to the voice of the kingdom of darkness. Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. Do you see what's going on here? Rocks, these rocks. The first rock, Jesus, thou the Christ, the Son of the living God. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Remember a revelation that God gave Peter, right? He's up in a mountain, in a mountain praying concerning the will of God. There he's transfigured. He could have been taken up, but he was not. He stopped it so he could fulfill the will of God and go to Calvary. Now we see once again, Peter is talking. And he says, you know, let's just stay right here. Let's build some tabernacles, some shrines, like all of these others on this mountain that are here. Let's just stay right here. You know, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to go to the cross. No, no, no. Jesus says, I'm going to listen to the voice of God. I'm going to do what God told me to do. And then God says, listen to Jesus Christ. Listen to his voice. Is everybody understanding this? Amen. Amen. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. See, this is what happens when, when you go to a Pentecostal church. This is why a lot of people don't like to go to Pentecostal churches. You know why? Because when they get there, the presence of God is there. And the glory of God is there. Okay? And God starts moving. And if, you're not, if your sin's not under the blood, let me explain something to you. That when the presence of God comes down, when the power of God comes down, when the glory of God comes down on any life, it always comes down, amen, in judgment. And if there's sin in the life, when his presence and power and glory comes down, if there's sin in the life, you will feel condemnation. You'll want to run out of the church. You'll want to get out of town because you know you're not living according to the word of God. You're listening to the voice of the devil, not the voice of God. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Every time the presence of God, the glory of God, the power of God comes down, it always comes down in wrath. But whenever you put your sin under the blood... When his presence comes down, it changes from wrath to what? Mercy. 
So a lot of people don't come to a Pentecostal church or they don't like to come to a Pentecostal church because when they get there, who oh, I'm afraid. And the reason why they're afraid because God's presence is there and there's sin in their life. And they want to run out the door. So when you get in there, instead of making them, you know, they're going to fall down on their face afraid or run out, want to run out the door, just say, look at them and say, let me help you put your sin under the blood. And you'll feel more comfortable in the presence and power and glory of God if I just help you put your sin under the blood of Jesus Christ. What happened to you when you first went to a Pentecostal church? Your eyes got about that big around, right? You walked in, you go, Ooh, I don't know if this is for me. And you thought it was all because you were, you were quiet and reserved and the, these Pentecostals were loud and you thought that was all about, this is just not me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm more formal and I'm Baptist and I'm a, I'm a religious person, you know. And I don't know about all this speaking in tongues and running and praising God and getting all emotional because that's just not me. I'm going to tell you something. That was a lie from hell. What it was all about is the presence of God was moving and you were freaking out. You didn't know what to do with it. You wanted to run from it. Hallelujah. You fell on your face in fear. But the Lord says, no, stand up. Don't be afraid. Because I'm going to Calvary and I'm going to remove the fear. I'm going to remove the guilt. I'm going to remove the thing that causes you to want to fear me. Give the Lord praise in the house. How many of y'all believe God is good? Have y'all ever been brought somebody to church they were freaking out the whole time? You know, the word I use, freaking, you know, I'm, I'm anyway, hallelujah. They don't know what to think, right? But, you know, just explain to them what you feel right now is the presence of power and glory of God. And what we need to do is we need to ask God to put the blood on you. So you don't feel his wrath and judgment. You feel his mercy and grace. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. He's the only one you need. You don't worship Moses and Elijah. You don't worship any man. You only worship Jesus Christ. He's the only one that you need in a time of your trouble. When you have problems, he's the only one that you need. If you've got sin in your life, he's the only one that you need. Hallelujah. If you've got demonic powers coming against you, Jesus is the only one you need. If the kingdom of darkness is trying to come against you and bring you down, Jesus is the only one that you need. Praise God. If you feel inferior, Jesus is the only one that you need. If you feel afraid today, Jesus is the only one that you need. If you're having hallucinations and delusions. Jesus is the only one you need. If you're coming under demonic assault, Jesus is the only one you need. If you need forgiveness of your sin, Jesus is the only one you need. And he's the only one you worship. Praise the Lord, church. They come down out of the mountain. Those, Jesus and those three, right? Walk down to the mountain, the first thing they come to, you know, the rest of the nine of the nine disciples are down at the foot of the mountain. They've been there for a little while, while Jesus and the three were up in the mountain in prayer. And you got the nine disciples down at the foot of the mountain. When they get there, they know that the scribes and Pharisees are there as well. And they walk, and as soon as they walk up there, there's a man whose son has a demonic spirit. Now remember what God, Jesus already said. If you build your life on this rock, the gates of hell shall not prevail. It. If you build, uh, hallelujah. If you build your life on Jesus, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. So now we have an example of the gates of hell literally being defeated by the power of God. But the problem is, is you've got a church at this point that don't have the power of God in it. Those nine that were at the foot of the mountain, not those three that were with him in the mountain. But the nine that were at the foot of the mountain did not have the power of God in their life strong enough to watch that demon be driven out. Are you understanding? They should have listened to what Jesus said in Matthew 16. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. They should have walked up there. In the name of Jesus, come out. Be removed. Be gone. But they didn't have the power that was necessary to do it say praise the Lord and so the Bible says the man the father goes to Jesus and said your disciples could not cast him out my son hallelujah is a lunatic 
the spirit is creating madness in him. This is the capital of lunacy in the empire of that day. In Caesarea Philippi where the gates of hell are located. Madness. This place, Caesarea Philippi, is the capital city of insanity and lunacy. It's everywhere. This young man is just an example of what was going on in so many. They were lunatics, full of lunacy, insanity. Not, are you with me? Not because of the moon. Amen. And see, my son, see, he's a lunatic. He's moonstruck. They believed that the moon, at, when it was in the high, you know, the high point, amen, when the moon was in its high point, it caused a manifestation of disease to take place in a person. But Jesus did not rebuke the moon because Jesus knew it wasn't the moon that was the problem. It was a demon spirit that was in that young man, and he cast the spirit out, not the moon. He's serving notice to that whole area. All those spirits that are there. All of that evil worship to false gods and philosophy and all kinds of sensuality that's in that area. He's serving notice that he has come to set the captives free. He's come to see people delivered from the powers of darkness. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Against these spirits. You know, there's some people today, they look at the moon and they want to name the moon for their, the way they act. Praise the Lord. Well, it's the moon. I look and see how big that moon is and this is why it's, oh, I'm acting like I am because of the moon. No, it's a demonic spirit. But the good news is Jesus is here to deliver, hallelujah, to give you victory. Woo, I love this, I love this, I love this. You know why? Because the enemy... You, as I preach right now, I'm telling you in the spirit that the enemy is being crushed. I tell you in the Holy Ghost right now, as I stand here and preach this, it's not my word, it's the word of Jesus. And it's bringing victory right now, not just to this little church, but it's bringing victory to others because there's power in the voice of Jesus Christ. And as I preach the word of God, not my own, it's defeating those powers and principalities. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not, it's not because of the moon that you act like you do. <laughs> you need delivered. Say, praise God. I'm crazy, pastor. And I get crazier every time the moon, I look up at the moon. I'm crazy. And <clears throat> moon making me crazy, you know. <clears throat> Amen. And I think some women, they're, they're concerned about their babies. If they're carrying a baby, you know, they're all superstitious about the moon and the effects of the moon on the child in the womb. The Lord's letting you know it's not the moon that causes you to go crazy. It's not the moon that makes you insane. It's not the moon that makes you a lunatic. It's not the moon that brings lunacy to your life. It's spirit powers that do that. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now. The enemy is afraid of me right now. He is afraid of me right now. He is afraid of you right now. Because I don't come with my own word. I come with the word of Jesus. Hear ye him. No, I discern victory right now. I discern victory in this house right now. God is on his throne. Jesus is on his throne. His blood redeems. His blood cleanses. And by his name, devils are cast out. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Woo. In that message of the demonization of Christians, I share a story about a pastor's wife in a foreign field. 
And uh, there was a lot of troubles in the marriage that was going on. And what ended up happening was the pastor's wife, uh, one day she decided to even stay home from church. And the pastor went to church and was trying to pastor the church. And the, and the wife decided to stay home. And while she stayed home, a witch doctor came and seduced her. And when he seduced her, I'm talking about literally seduced her, demonic spirits entered into that pastor's wife. The church planner, we call him the missionary, amen, in that area, was going to come and visit and try to help the pastor and his wife with the problems in their marriage. So as this uh, church planner makes his way to the house, it is recognized, it's known, it's, it's revealed to the man, uh, and not just to the man, but to the woman, the pastor's wife, that this missionary is coming to the house right then. So she, listen to me, the pastor's wife, she runs out of the house as this man is coming, the church planner or the missionary is coming to her house to seek to help them. She runs out of the house. She tears all of her clothes off. She's literally standing naked before that church planter. There was a spirit of sexuality, unclean spirit that had moved into her. This church planter looked at this pastor's wife and rebuked that spirit. There was creating sexual perversion in her. He rebuked that spirit and that spirit left her. Just by a word. I come against you spirit in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave her and and that spirit left her. She looked at herself. She was embarrassed by the whole thing. Embarrassed by the whole thing. She put her clothes on. And the church planter went into the pastor and pastor's wife's home and ministered to the pastor's wife. Are you understanding? God delivered her and gave her victory. But the, but the story is that from that day forward, because she opened her life up to that spirit, she had problems with fantasies of the mind in the area of sexuality. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I magnify Jesus. I magnify his power today. Demons are subject to the name of Jesus. But you and I can open our lives up to those spiritual powers and forces. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But I'm telling you, God today is on the throne. He can bring victory to our lives. Just one example of the power of the name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, Hear Jesus. The man says, your disciples couldn't cast them out. Jesus cast that spirit out just like that. <clears throat> Amen. Power and authority over the kingdom of darkness. The disciples go to Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So why could we not cast them out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. You're not prayed up enough. You're not fasting you're not walking in the spirit. And because you're not walking in the spirit, prayed up and fasted enough, then you don't have enough faith to overcome that spirit. You don't have the tenacity. You don't have the persistence. You don't have the consistency. You don't have the determination. You don't have the patience that is required to be my disciple. You're not willing to take up your cross and deny yourself and follow me. You're not willing to crucify your flesh. To be his disciple, he's already told them, you're going to have to lift up the cross. That means you're going to have to be willing to be crucified. That means you're going to have to be willing to die. You're going to go through some things as a believer before you become a disciple. You're going to go through a time where you're lifting up the cross and somebody's nailing you to that cross. It will be a time of emotional suffering. Pain in your life. Death on a cross is not easy. I want you to hear me, church. Listen to what I'm saying. 
Jesus says, if you're my disciple, you're going to have to take up your cross. That means lift it up. Not just carry it, but lift it up. That means be willing to be put on it. That means if you're going to be my disciple, then that means you're going to have to be willing to go through some pain in your life. You're going to have to be willing to suffer some things in your life. You're going to have to be willing to deny some things, crucify that flesh, put it on the cross, be willing to sacrifice, be willing to suffer, be willing to have emotional pain and physical pain in your life. And then when you get through that cross time of your life, you will come out on the other side more powerful than anybody has ever seen in their life. But it is only after you go through a time of pain and suffering emotionally and physically, mentally. When just about everybody has rejected you. And just about everybody has forsaken you. When you get through that and remain faithful to God, determined, consistent, persistent, and patient. When you get through that, you will come forth in power like you have never seen before. The disciples at this point are not walking that way. They don't have power in their life. Amen. They're followers of Jesus, but they're not in the spirit. Give God praise. They're not prayed up. They're not fasting. In that message, the demonization of Christians, I made a statement in those days. I said, if you're not praying, you cannot do the work of this kingdom. It is impossible to do the work of this kingdom without prayer and without fasting. In the name of Jesus, you and I must be a people of prayer and fasting or you will never make it in this kingdom. Because you can make up your mind all day long. I'm going to live for him. But if you're not praying, you'll never live for him. Because this is something you have to understand. That you've got to pray and I've got to pray. We've got to fast to overcome the powers that are coming against us. You can't just live for God by a made up mind. You've got to be willing to be crucified on a cross. So there will be testing that comes to you. And there will be temptations that come to you. Woo, are you hearing what I'm saying? And oftentimes right before you have a breakthrough in the great power and manifestation of God in your life, it will be one of the greatest temptations you'll ever face in your life that you will have to overcome and conquer. But when you get through it, having prayed, having fasted, having defeated your flesh and cast out demons and been cleansed by the blood. When you get through it, you will come forth like nobody has ever seen you before. Give God praise in the house. It is not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to fall. You have to hear what I'm saying to you. So when people forsake you and you don't understand why, people reject you and you don't understand why, and you're going through emotional suffering, mental suffering, anguish, and physical pain, uh, you're dying, brothers and sisters, to yourself. You are emptying yourself so that God can give you more of, not so much of himself, you're giving more of you to him. So when you empty yourself, you are become more in control of the Spirit of God. Do you understand this? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. So the disciples at this point have failed this man. Jesus, why could we not cast them out? Because of your unbelief. This kind goes out, but nothing but by prayer and fasting. How be it? How be it this kind goes not out, but by prayer and by fasting. You have to get in the spirit. You have to walk in the power. You have to walk. Are you understanding what I'm saying? These spirits are not moved by a made up mind. They're moved by a person who has the power of God in their life. So you'll go through things you don't even understand. You'll go through mental anguish, suffering, pain. You'll go through emotional torment that you don't even understand what is going on. 
It is so that you and I can be crucified. And having been crucified, we rise up in a power of God like we never had before. Because now God can trust you. God can trust you now with being used by him. Lord, I'm having a hard time living for you. You know why? Because you can't do it by a made-up mind. You're having trouble with your walk? You need to pray. You need to fast. And overcome that flesh. Be victorious. And when, listen to me. When you get through that time of crucifixion, and I've already listed how many ways that can happen, and you may be fasting and crucifying your flesh that way, you will just walk into an area where demon powers are and they will run from you and you don't even have to pray. I'm going to say it again. You don't even have to pray. 